Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to do this. Uh, this is water physics in GameMaker Studio. Alright, so recently uh, Google created their Liquid Fun Physics engine, um, which is pretty much an extension of the normal Box 2D physics, except it uses particles which are a lot faster to handle and allows us to do things like this and have water physics. Now, I did a bit of stress testing myself, and I managed to get to just over 6,000 particles in the room without any noticeable frame drop, but there was actually a lot of frame drop um, when running the debug mode. But, um, yeah, there was no noticeable frame rate issues, but it did crash the game with a vertex issue, which said the vertex could not be found, so... I figured that was just because GameMaker couldn't handle all the uh, particles in the room at one time. Alright, so yeah, I'm going to be showing you how to set this up. So, uh, just so you know, this is the early access version of GameMaker. So right now, this isn't available in your um, normal GameMaker Studio, so if you want to test this out or use it, you have to get the early access version, and then all the uh, new functions and everything are available in that. Alright, so let's just show you how to do this. Alright, first thing is every window can now be dragged out of GameMaker itself, which is pretty awesome, I think, because I've got multiple monitors, so it makes things easier for me. But yeah, that's not this. That's not uh, sorry. That's not what this is focused on. Alright, so this is a normal like physics setup. It's just got walls, dynamic parent, static parent. Um, if you haven't watched one of my other tutorials, then go and check out the setting and basic physics and you'll see what those are. The only new thing in this is OBJ liquid. Alright, so to start off with, I'll show you the sprite. So we have SPL water, and it's just a very small 8x8 eight eight circle. Okay, um, and then for OBJ liquid, in the create event, this is where the new functions come into play. So just make that a bit bigger. Alright, so to start with, physics particle set radius to 3. So the radius is half the width of the circle, goes right around. So the circle, like the particles that it created, will actually be 6 uh, pixels wide, because the radius is 3. But yeah, so... Um, Physics particle set radius is a global thing, so once you set that variable, every particle from that point will be created with a radius of 3. Um, and then physics particle set max count to 5000 means that uh, there'll never be more than 5000 particles in the room. So if you, even if you're trying to create one, if there's 5000 particles, that function for creating it just won't happen. Okay. Uh, and then below that you have flags equals PHY particle flag water. Um, that line symbol, I'm not entirely sure what it's called, so we'll just leave it as line symbol for now. Alright, um, and then particle, sorry, PHY particle flag tensile. Alright, so the water flag is probably the one you're going to use most commonly. Um, this flag gives your particles their kind of behavior. Alright, so, um, Every flag is well documented in the help file for the early access version, so you can check out most of them there, but the, uh, the water flag pretty much just makes it act like water, and the tensile flag allows them to group up into blobs. So when they collide with each other, it um it's described as surface tension in the uh, manual. But yeah, so when they, um, when they collide, they can group up into the blobs and they kind of attract into each other. Um, this actually looks really cool in Zero Gravity, because I tested it out in my game Space Snake. Uh, sorry, Ultimate Space Snake, because I had to change the name. Um, but yeah. So those are the two flags that we're using. Uh, those will be used again later. So you set the variable to those two flags. You don't have to use those flags, but for testing reasons, and I think it adds a pretty good particle effect, like a water effect. Yeah. Alright, so moving on. Uh, step event. Alright, so this one here is what creates the particles. So physics, particle, create. Really simple. Alright, so your type flags, which 
defines like the behavior of your particle. And if we just type our flags variable there because we created the variable in the create event. Alright, then the x and y position to be created from, I just put an x and y so I can move where they're getting created from really easily. Um, XV and YV stands for X and Y and velocity. So this is the starting velocity of the particle. So say if you wanted to shoot out to the right, you could set the X to I don't know, like 500. Um, whatever you want. But yeah, so that's the velocity that they're created with. Right, the color, C white, um, and then alpha, 1, and then category, 1. Alright, so color is pretty simple, it's just the color that you want them to be. Um, say you had a white particle sprite, then that particle would be drawn with that color. And um, you can have color mixing as well. Um, so, like, if a red and a blue particle collide, then their um, colors will blend together and create, like, one color. So let's say you had, like, a pool of blue particles and a small pool of red particles and the blue particles like fell into the red ones and the red ones would merge in with the blue. Um, yeah, it's like mixing two liquids together. But yeah, All right, alpha is pretty simple, it's just the see-throughness of the object. Uh, most of you will know what that is. And then your category, that is new. Right, so the category is just a simple a simple integer and it allows you to have multiple types of particles. So when you're creating the particles or a particle group, which you can create too, but I'm not going to go into that with this tutorial. Um, when, yeah, when you're creating your particles, you give them categories and it makes them kind of stand out from the crowd kind of thing. So you could have like lava particles, which were category one, and then your water particles would be category two. And then when it comes to drawing those, you'll see why you've got categories. But yeah, so it kind of just separates them into groups using like ID numbers. All right, uh, physics particle delete region box. Now this is just a simple box region, which is below the room so that the particles get deleted when they fall out of that little gap in the floor that you saw before. So room width divided by two for the X, so that's the center of the room. Uh, room height plus 32. So that is the height of the room, plus 32 pixels. Uh, then half width, so it's just half the total width of the box, which is room width divided by 2, which makes it the full length of the room. And then 16, which will make it uh, 32 pixels total. And that just gets put at the very bottom of the room, so then when the particles fall into it, they're destroyed. I can delete single particles by getting the particle ID. To get the particle ID, you simply create a variable and set that to it. So you just have something like part equals physics particle create, and then that will get the ID of the particle created. But we don't need to do that now. Okay, and then finally, the draw event. Yeah, physics particle draw. This is a new draw event for the physics engine and it allows you to draw sprites um, for the particles. Alright, so flags, the type mask. Now this has to be the same as the particles that you want to draw, which is why we're using the flags variable again. Alright, so let's say that we changed like a flag in this compared to a flag in the flags variable, which um, is used to create the particles themselves. If they're different, it won't get drawn. Right, the way it get the way it chooses what particles to draw is based off the flags and based off the category, which I told you about before. So if you did have, say, a lava particle, then it would probably have different flags, so you'd want those flags and its and its own category too. So whether it was zero or two or whatever. But yeah, these have to be the same as the particle that you want to draw. Alright. Um then SPL water, which is the sprite we want to draw, and the sub image to draw. Right, and that's it. So the create, step, and draw event does the whole thing, and then the rest is kind of like the collisions and everything are done for you. Alright, so once we've got all that stuff down, you don't have to tick users physics or anything, it's done. I right, just run your game. I will place the particle creator in your room first, and then run your game. And there you go. Alright, so this can be 
use for heaps of different things. Um, you can actually create uh, not real, but fake um, soft body physics using these. Uh, create like create groups of them, and I think it was make them elastic, and it allows you to create like boxes and circles out of these particles, and they act like soft body uh, physics. But yeah. I uh, hope this helped you guys out. Um, remember, this is the early access version, so right now, at the time of creating this video, I'm not sure when you're going to be watching this, so by the time you're watching this, it might actually be out in the normal version. But yeah, right now, this is early access only. Um, but yeah, I hope this helped you guys out. Uh, if you didn't know how to do it, you yeah, should know. Uh, like, subscribe if you want. Um, if you've got tutorial requests, please request those using the Facebook page. Just send an inbox to the NT Games Facebook page. Uh, questions on this tutorial, just um, comment any questions on this tutorial. And we've also got a Twitter page now, so you can follow us on that. Alright, see you guys next time.